maybe send the tweet out. I mean, we're live right now. I haven't oh, even hit oh. the like intro music. I just told everybody I was trying to start the show and Rob was ranting. This is the only way I can shut him up for a second. Anyway, let's Yikes. go. What is up, you beautiful people? This is Gary Horton. This is this is the NWA. It's the show celebrating the past, present, future, history, legacy, and tradition of the greatest pro wrestling entity of all time. Of course, we're talking about the National Wrestling Alliance. And uh, sorry if I seem distracted right up top there because the music was still playing in my ear and I realized that muted the YouTube video where I could see the chat and uh, see Certified Hustler hating on me because apparently I talked some trash about St. Louis. We'll talk about that Ooh. in a minute. Gary's yeah, got heat. He did. Oh, he did. Oh, oh, he's got heat. Awesome. They tried to get it. heat with I was there. Me. I was there. Yeah. Listen. No, and certified I just kind of stood back. Gary Shaw did. He Shaw did. I just kind of stood back. I let Gary, you know, you got to, sometimes you just got to let Gary talk, let him get it out, and then move on. Oh, that was, that was probably the whiskey talking that night. But, Hello. but, it, I'll clarify that. So stick with us, certified, because I like I loved St. Louis. St. Louis had a lot going for it, and uh, I, I especially loved uh, El Burro Loco. That was my jam, man. Yeah, that place. we hung out there like every single day we were there. Every and, day. Uh, yeah, and then you See, got what that you big. You don't know though. After day two, when y'all knocked out after seventy three, y'all was and, and I was emotionally spent. Y'all went to bed. Me and Certified Hustler went out. We burned St. Louis to the ground, didn't we, Certified Hustler? <laughs> we went down. We shut down. Me and Certified Hustler shut down St. Louis, man. He showed me every place, and uh, and you guys were never the wiser for it. I don't I even know how it. Certified Hustler did that after all that dance that he was doing in his chair during the middle of the show. <laughs> That's, that where we That's where we went after. That's where we went after. Waving the towel. To the chair. He was getting down. That was certified hustler <laughs> took me to a little a little place called the Magic Attic, and we was in there like two, 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 two. all I'm sort night. We shut it down. On my screen. Oh, God, <laughs> ever since ever since Nick Aldis lost the world's championship, Rob, you you have just been slowly just spiraling down. It's true. <laughs> Your thoughts and prayers, man. Thoughts and prayers. You're always in my thoughts. And <laughs> thoughts prayers. and prayers for Rob Stinson uh, and I really in the, did in the wake of his I? loss. What? <laughs> I said I was looking at the uh, I was looking at the YouTube stream too, and you're like, you ain't you ain't lying. I did freeze up. Yeah, you did. You did in the they middle. Edited, of whatever the, YouTube edited my dance moves in the it middle of whatever too, the hell that was. You did. You too hot to handle, man. It's all right. It it's probably better for everybody. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is I love St. Louis. I love your borough loco. I love the chase. I love the people of St. Louis. I love that y'all got that giant arch. You got like a half of McDonald's right there, just giant sized in your city. Y'all working on it. You're going to get full size soon. And let me tell you, Big Macs are the way to go. Props to St. Louis. I love you guys. Um, am, I, am I a heel in St. Louis now? Is that what's You're happening? You're a heel. You're a heel. <laughs> it seems like that's what's happening. Uh, no, 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 no. no. I, I love St. Louis. Listen, to, to, to clarify right up top, the only thing I was talking about last night was a very specific set of people in that audience that were it wasn't that you were rowdy i'm all about rowdy ask anybody that goes to gpb with me or any other wrestling show with me i'll get rowdy i love rowdy especially at a wrestling show show those people what you came for like let's make everybody have a good time but mm -hmm. some people in the crowd that one night were yelling some nasty stuff to the performers and it was not cool i was not cool with that that's what i was talking about don't shake your head, Rob. You were there. No, Rob no, no. I'm with you. With I'm Rob with you like, on that. I'm with, I'm with you on that, man. I was there, too. Uh, you heard what I said to the people, but you're talking about you're rowdy. Here's what Gary's version of rowdy is. Gary's version of rowdy is, hey, we're going to uh, we're going to Zaxby's. I'm not going to get the six-piece. I'm going to get the nine-piece. That's his Damn. version of rowdy. 
Does yeah, that I seem rowdy to me, or does that seem standard? You don't get a body like this going for a six yes. piece when there's a niner. Like you just yeah. don't. <laughs> Only the best, man. Don't settle. That's right. If anything, I'll take the six and the niner, and that's oh. as far as I'll take that joke. Boof. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah, man. I got students in the chat. I got students in the chat here. I'm a public school educator. Ooh. No, I'm just talking about chicken nuggets, man. I'm talking about chicken yeah. nuggets. Anyway. I'm not talking about Zaxby's anymore. Uh, Wrestling with the MMA's all about a shirt that says Big Macs are the way to go props to St. Louis. Anyway. <laughs> all right. What are we anyway, here for? What's up, what everybody? Kevin Davis, certified hustler. <laughs> you know you're a boy. R.A. Davis is in the house. Connecting people through wrestling. It was all up in St. Louis. We love that yeah. guy. Uh, awesome. Eric Dale, Nani is in here. I saw somebody from Germany. There was a German guy in there. Or girl, I don't know. Uh, Jedi, Sean's in the house. Neil's here. Everybody, it's good to see you guys. And thanks for being here, man. This is awesome. The hashtag NWA fam is in effect tonight after this latest episode of NWA Power. We're going to talk about that episode. It was a big episode. I got to know Doc's cool. thoughts because things are getting rowdy uh, on the show yeah. as well as in the St. Louis audience. So this is going to be uh, very interesting to see see how we're all taking to what's going on on the show. Will, you, you were saying something that I walked all over you there. Uh, no, I was just ad libbing in the background. You know how songs they just have like the guy that ad libs in the background. That's what I was. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> woo, yeah. You were just you were just the high right. man. Yeah, yeah exactly, high man. exactly. All right, all right, that's cool. Uh, all right, well let's uh, let's just jump right into the show and we'll start talking about that. Then we'll get into all sorts of other things. Uh, but first, uh, I do want to say uh, that we. Well, you know what? We'll save this till after this first part so I can get Rob to filibuster so I can tell you uh, another piece of information. Um, I know that that I failed right off the bat. I tried to get right into the show. It felt like a flow and then I just like jacked it up right there at the beginning. So uh, you're welcome, everybody. Mm. Thank you so much. Hey, Trenda, what's up? Uh, Ezra, it's good to see you too. All right, I'm going to stop talking to all you people. Let's talk about Nick Aldis and Trevor Murdoch face off for the first time since... NWA 73. So this show opens up with Trevor Murdoch standing at the podium with Kyle Davis. And just right off the bat, he calls out Nick Aldis. So things are heating up immediately on NWA power. Aldis comes out. A bit of a somber Aldis. More somber than we're used to seeing. He just doesn't seem quite as fired up as he normally has been lately. And Murdoch takes the initiative, takes the initiative and takes the mic and starts talking to him. He says something along the lines of, uh, over this past several months, we've done a lot of different stuff. We've done things out of character and everything else. Uh, we've, we've done what it takes to be the man in this business. And he said it reminds him of a time when he sat in Harley's office and Harley told him that the belt doesn't make the champion, the champion makes the belt. You let everyone in the world know that you're the champion. You show them that you're the champion. And he said that every time that Nick Aldis stepped in that ring, he let the world know that he was the baddest man on the planet. And Harley said, or Trevor said that he's letting Nick know tonight he checked all the boxes, every single thing anybody would look for in a champion. And if Harley was here, he'd say, good job, kid. He said, you defended that belt with pride, with everything that you had. I've never had a tougher fight in my life than I did at NWA 73. And you made sure that if I was going to win that title, I had to really earn it. And then we get Nick firing back. And we saw it. We saw a tweet from Nick earlier tonight just saying, if this feels real, it's because it was. And it did feel real. Nick says, in 2007, a skinny punk kid scraped together all his money to come to Eldon, Missouri, because he could have a chance to learn from the legendary Harley race. And one of the more mind-blowing aspects of that training was that one of the days, one of the WWE tag team champions showed up to that school to talk to them and help them along. And that man was Trevor Murdoch. And that's why when they both attended Harley Race's funeral, Nick walked up to Trevor and said, what are you doing? Why are you not wrestling anymore? Why don't you come to Atlanta? Please come to Atlanta 
and see what we're doing. The NWA celebrates people like you. They celebrate wrestlers. They celebrate men who fight like men. You deserve your chance to show what you can do. And and Trevor did, and, and now we see the results of that. These two have had their off and on throughout the entire time NWA Power's been going. And uh, Nick tells him, because of where they're at now, that Trevor deserves his chance to show that he's everything Harley thought he could be. And it's time for Nick Aldis to step away for a little while. He says, this will be the hardest, most rewarding experience of your life. And it was the honor of his life. And then the two shake hands. Nick called us. I swear to God. Yeah, I don't want to call him out. And I don't want him to hop on here. I mean, I, I, it almost feels like somber for me that I'm talking about all this. Nick Aldis is usually a regular on the show, and we haven't seen him in a little while ourselves. Almost had a tear in his eye, it looked like. And uh, as he walked away, rode off into the sunset, some might say, as a thank you, Nick chant echoed throughout the crowd. Well, I'm going to go to you first and just get your thoughts initially after this, uh, just to see what you think, because I know Doc's got a lot of feelings about this too, and I, I want to see where he's at. But I, I'd love to know, Will, like where you, where your head's at when you saw this face off, because I don't know, it, it wasn't what I expected. Uh, it was beautiful and emotional, and it was just, uh, I don't know, I expected the two bulls to go to war again, <laughs> and that's exactly the opposite of what happened. Yeah, um, it was it was a big moment, and and you're right, it was a a somber, beautiful moment, and it was one of those moments that reminded me why I love professional wrestling so much because you you, you can't ask for a better series of matches, uh, series of exchanges than what we have gotten as the hashtag NWA fam from. Nick Aldis and Trevor Murdoch over the past few months. Um, it's, you know, we, we always talk about, you know, the term prize fight wrestling. Um, we love prize fight wrestling. That's what the NWA is all about. Um, and that's exactly what this felt like, because if you've ever, if you've ever gotten a fight with somebody, there's, there's like a weird, like special bond when you, when you go to war with somebody like Nick and Trevor have in the past few months. And, I think this was the only logical conclusion of that because despite where we are on in our, in our fandom and in our preference in terms of who we like and who we don't like, you got to agree that these two guys are, are legends. They're, they're legendary competitors in this sport. And what we've seen from them in the past few months is a testament to that. And so I don't want to say this is a conclusion. I think that's where I don't want to use like strong or suggestive language like, you know, and, and you talked about Nick riding off into the sunset, but it was it was definitely a completely different Nick Aldis than what we've seen and what we're used to seeing um, the past couple of seasons of power when he's strutting around with with sweet Charlotte and he's on top of the world. But he's he he's got an awareness about him and the way that he presented that I thought was spot on. I mean, when you're walking around with that title uh, and I think Trevor actually said this, when you're walking around with that title, you're the man and you have to act like you're the man. You have to act like you're the most important person in the room because you are the most important person in the room. Um, and he commended Nick because Nick always did that. Um, and so it was just, it was just one of these moments where you see two guys who have gone to war together who this chapter of that war has been completed. There's, there's probably potentially going to be another chapter just knowing these two guys and their competitive spirits. But for now, it just seems like they're both kind of stepping back and looking at what each of them has accomplished and, um, you know, showing respect to each other. And that's all you can do in a situation like this. And um, it, it really was, I mean, it was, it was a mixture. It was bittersweet. It was a mixture of a feel good moment for, for us as wrestling fans. And then like just this heaviness of like, man, when this title, the 10 pounds of gold, when it changes hands, that is a big deal. You know, um, I'm not throwing any other wrestling organization under the bus, but it seems like title changes are just a dime a dozen nowadays. You don't see that 
in the NWA, and that's because this is prize fight wrestling. You have title matches that mean something. You have guys feuding with each other because there's legitimate, you know, uh, uh, hopes and aspirations and careers on the line, like we saw at NWA 73. Um, so it just takes a different weight to it. And so I thought this exchange was um, was perfect, for lack of a better term. I mean, it was two guys that uh, owe it to each other to stand across the podium and shake hands and give each other props for uh, what they've accomplished, uh, each of them in their own right. I mean, Nick Aldis, obviously, 1,044 days, as Rob has reminded us, we probably will never see that again in our lifetime. That's an accomplishment in and of itself. And then Trevor Murdoch coming from not really wrestling to coming to the NWA under under the agreement of wrestling maybe one match, you know, when when power first started and look at him now. Um, it's one of those fairy tale stories that that you love to see in professional wrestling. Yeah, I wonder if Trevor could have anticipated when when Nick mentioned that meeting uh, when he was a WWE World Tag Team Champion and he came out and gave his time out of the day to come and talk to the kids that had signed up for the Holly Race Camp, you know, to train and study under Holly Race. If Trevor Murdoch could have anticipated where he'd be today, like I'm sure he must have, like at least a, as a lofty dream or something, you know, because here he is, Harley Race's first student, by the way. Trevor Murdoch is. Most of you guys know that. Um, I am, uh, I'm nearly 50 years old guys and uh, I'm an old infantry guy. I'm a veteran of the global war on terror. I've never been a sensitive person until my youngest daughter was born and I see her and Piper interact. Those of you who are regular followers know about my family and this and that. Um, uh, and the, the older I get, the more sensitive I become. So I can appreciate now, uh, uh, the emotion that that Nick Aldis expressed today. I've never seen him like this. We've spent a lot of time with Nick Aldis. We've been privileged to be able to talk to him, to interview him, to get him to, you know, to to give us content and to, and it, all in the interest of, of furthering the story of the NWA. We've gotten a, a really unqualified uh, amount of access that that most people don't get to have, and we're privileged to do that, uh, you know, and to have that. And we've never seen this side of him before like we have tonight. It's really unique. I've never seen him, you know, in all the conversations I've had with him, I've never seen him like that. And, uh, I, I, you know, we're all nerds here. You, you guys that are NWA fans, you guys are all nerds. Uh, that's your intelligence, is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. So I want to channel some Star Wars here. I'm thinking of the episode in uh, 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 The Last Skywalker. What was the name of the last episode? Uh, is that it? The Last Skywalker or the... Two towers. You know, gear. <laughs> right. Well, I know you put I'm me on the of, spot. I'm thinking of the scene though, where Palpatine is uh, is uh, is channeling all the Sith Lords through history, you know, and uh, and I'm seeing Trevor Murdoch and Nick Aldis there at that podium, and they're channeling every NWA champion in history. How can the you rise hate of Skywalker? That? Can, I've got to get that out. The there rise of Skywalker. Dirty. Yeah, the rise of Skywalker. Yeah, the rise of Skywalker. That's it. I see. I see Nick Aldis there and Trevor Murdoch both. Not each of them channeling everybody, but between the two of them, they've channeled everybody. You know, I see. I see Nick Aldis channeling Ric Flair and channeling Luthes, and and I see Trevor Murdoch tra channeling Harley Race and Dusty Rhodes, and uh, and at that moment. It's such a unique moment to see this transition of power. I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a Presbyterian. I don't, I'm not trying to preach anybody, but I, you know, in the in the in the prophets, they talk about the passing of like the of 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 kings and queens and heads of state. They they speak of that as the passing of divine prerogative from one person to the other, and they always describe that in seismic terms, like a planet fading into oblivion, a star falling. And it felt like that. It felt like we have a seismic shift going on in the world. Like there's an un, an imbalance in the world, or, or it's not an, an imbalance isn't a bad thing. It's just a transition, a passing of power. Now, I don't think that what we've seen here is Nick Aldis walking off into the sunset, but I do think that we've seen the closing of a chapter. I think that this meeting between the two brought some closure to a very heated, very ugly, very painful very ugly at times interchange between these two men for, for, for a long time. But at that moment at that podium, when they shook hands, they both channeled 
the entire history of the NWA and, you know, whatever my personal feelings are about Trevor Murdoch and Nick Aldis, all that aside, all of us who love history, you guys in the chat, you know, Tony Justice, uh, connecting people to wrestling, Front Row, Certified Hustler, Mongolian and Mike, all you guys that are, you know, Roy Caps, all you guys that love the NWA, James Lawrence, you guys that live for this. That's the kind of thing that we live for. This acknowledgement that, hey, you know, I may not have liked the outcome, but I'm here to acknowledge that the torch has been passed. And now, as Nick Aldis said, I'm going to walk away for a while. It's your turn to carry the weight of this company. Let's see what you can do. You've earned the right to do it. Harley would be proud. And let's see what you can do. But, there, man, it's a very emotional, beautiful moment, uh, classic moment. This is one of those things that, uh, you know, they'll be playing clips of this for years on down the road. And, and many of us here in the chat, uh, we we were able to see that in person. So it was a beautiful moment um, in, in, in pro wrestling history. And it's worthy of, I mean, this whole interchange between Trevor Murdoch and and Nick Aldis is worthy of book level, definitely like scholarly article level treatment. But I'm glad we got to witness it. And I think the, the two love the NWA, love the championship for which they stand and for for which they compete. And they have both done an honorable and noble job at, at representing um, the great, the one true sport, as we like to say, the greatest sport uh, in the history of mankind. And uh, so beautiful, beautiful uh, segment. Great opening. How do you follow that? But guess what? Oh, they follow it. They follow it this episode of Power. Yeah, the um, uh, big stuff going on in the NWA all the way around, and that's why we love the National Wrestling Alliance. So it's not just this one moment, but definitely one we want to focus in on and and show some love for because uh, these 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 two guys have given everything, and especially in NWA seventy three. Imagine you talk about following something. Imagine NWA seventy three. You're in the main event, and you've got to have a world title match after the whole weekend that's just gone on. That's and they did, and put on one of the most most emotional and uh, just just big fight feel matches I've ever seen in my life. I mean, those two guys went to town, and uh, yeah, and 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 to clarify, I didn't mean I thought Nick Aldis was riding off into the sunset forever. I didn't, you know, the cowboy rides off into the sunset sometimes. I'm not talking about James Storm. I'm just talking about in a movie. But no, John I, Wayne comes back in the next movie. It's uh, it's not over. Yeah, I know for Nick you didn't Aldis. mean that. I know you weren't saying that. Uh, you know, I just wanted to to add my own little commentary on that because it, it did seem like he did say, Gary, he did say, hey, I've got to walk away for a while. And uh, and so it seemed like, you know, historically in the NWA, the champion gets an entitled rematch. It seems like Nick is going to sit on that for a while. You, you've got you've got many people with title shots sitting on that. So, I mean, that raises a lot of questions about, like, what is going to happen? in the NWA, like the, everybody theoretically, not theoretically straight up, everybody wants that championship. That's the one they want. And so that's in everybody's crosshairs, but you've got, you know, Goddess who is the greatest world's champion of the modern era. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. We can debate where he stands in the history of the pantheon of the champions, but he's saying, you know, just to, to, to piggyback what you're saying, Gary, he's saying, I'm going to walk out of the, you know, I'm taking a, I'm going away for a little while or I'm going to step back for a little while. So I'm not saying that you're saying it's a forever thing, but it does definitely seem like the closing of a chapter, a chapter, ha a book has multiple chapters, but it seems like this chapter that that was the closing of it. So I could be wrong. Again, I don't have any special insight. Any of you don't have, uh, but, but it did seem to me like this was the closing of a chapter, a very important and uh, monumental chapter uh, in the history of of this co of this company, the NWA. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, definitely a, a new chapter, and that's and that's well said. And uh, and you're right. Another great point that yeah, traditionally, like he would get another title shot, and he's choosing to just step away for a moment. And he even kind of says that in the uh, in in the the speech he gave tonight. Uh, you deserve a chance to show your what Harley said you could be. And uh, he's, he's letting Trevor have a moment here and other people step up and challenge. Um, it's, it's, 
it's going to be a big deal uh, to see what happens here with Nick and, and to see what happens with Trevor. I do want to mention, in case you guys aren't aware, over at Collar and Elbow, Trevor Murdoch does have his very first shirt. Like his very first shirt is up available right now. And it is pretty awesome. I'm going to show it to you real quick here. Everybody's a tough guy until they meet one. There's your world's heavyweight champion. Nay, your real world's heavyweight champion right there. Trevor Murdoch with his very first shirt available right now over at collarandelbow.com. I thought we had a code and I can't find it. So, well, just, you know. Oh, well, that's life. So maybe somebody else has got one or whatever. Just go spend the money. Trevor Murdoch's got a shirt, people, and that's good. It actually did say just some insider knowledge. I actually do know that the original version of the show, uh, it was a tough guy. It had a double uh, or a B-A-D-A-S-S, but kids can't wear that at school. And Trevor's got kids, so you got to gotta look out for them. So uh, good looking out, kids. So everybody's a tough guy until they meet one. Trevor Murdoch's brand new shirt, Collar and Elbow. Make sure you go check those guys out. And Collar and Elbow, by the way, great people. Rod over there. Al Snow just saved a kid last week. I don't know if you guys saw that. Al Snow saving a child from drowning. And then uh, and then you got Rod, who's a great guy. He came through in St. Louis. And uh, I mean, that's how I got this beautiful Bobby Eaton shirt right here. All the proceeds, by the way, for the sales of this shirt went uh, straight to a fund for uh, the family of Bobby Eaton. They did the same thing for Shad Gaspar. So Collar and Al Elbow are uh, great people and uh, deserve your business. So check them out. All right. So uh, you talked about following up on this big emotional moment. We got right into it with a uh, with a, a little kick-ass match here. And uh, that was uh, the first uh, match of the quarterfinals, I guess, of the NWA Tag or no to make the quarterfinals of the NWA tag team tournament. Uh, we've had the we've had two teams in there already. Here's our third. We get Kratos and Stevens seeing if they can be on the same page versus the rude dudes, El Rudo and uh Jamie Stanley. And so a brand new team. And they I gotta be honest, last week on their promo, they really kind of caught me. Uh, I love to uh, hear them talk. Um, and so I was interested to see how they hold up against the former tag team champions here between Kratos and Stevens, and since those guys seem to have like a bit of a issue back and forth. And well, uh, turns out not so well. They did not do so well. Uh, Kratos just mauled uh, everybody and uh, didn't even really let Aaron do anything. And Kratos just killed them all and uh, pinned them one, two, three. And that was it. Sorry, Jamie Stanley. Thanks for coming. Uh, maybe next time. The Rude Dudes have a future. I'm sure of it. But uh, they'll have a different strategy the next time they face the former tag team champions. Uh, they make their way immediately to the podium. And uh, Aaron starts to speak. And we saw this in the, on the, on the online, if you saw the backstage interview. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Kratos is tired of letting Aaron talk, it seems like. So he just snatches the mic immediately and says, everybody has expected us to go our separate ways. And we've seen that online. We've seen a lot of people discussing that. This is a thrown-together tag team. They're not a real tag team, that sort of thing. He says, uh, where I come from, we believe in brotherhood. We believe in loyalty. No matter what, I'll always have your back. When you called me to talk to me about joining this team and winning those tag team titles, I saw something in you in that moment. And I see it now. And backstage, I see you walking around. And a lot of times you're a general. You're in charge. You take charge. There's a killer inside of you. That is why I'm beside you. That's why I'm at your side. But sometimes I see you walking around and your head's down. And you look bummed out. And you look unsure about how you want to go. Well, he says a quote that I, I kind of loved. Uh, conflict delayed is conflict multiplied. So it's time for you to grab the bull, not by the horns. No, no. He says, you need to grab that bull by the balls. And we need to run through everybody. So make a decision. And Kratos walks away. And uh, Aaron Stevens makes the point that the last person that spoke to him that way was his traitor, uh, Killer Kowalski, I believe is what he said. And uh, so... Uh, he's got a, he's got some thinking to do a decision to make. So what does this mean for Aaron Stevens? Well, I'm going to throw you again here. Uh, former tag team champions. They advance in the quarterfinals 
And uh, so, how'd you feel about this match? How do you feel about the relationship between Kratos and Stevens, Rude Dudes, anything? Uh, I thought the match was very one-sided, as you mentioned. I think, I think, I think something has awoken in. Uh, I think Kratos has always been a killer. He's always been. Uh, we we talk about it, a mercenary, somebody who is a beast. He just runs through people. But I do feel like when they were holding those tag team titles for a while, it felt like, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of contenders coming after them. It was kind of smooth sailing. They were doing some six man tag stuff, some other random stuff. And then when La Rebellion showed up, uh, the tides kind of changed. And then ultimately we saw the titles change. And I think that woke up something in in both Kratos and Aaron Stevens. And we're seeing that. And listen, you mentioned people online talking about this is a thrown together tag team. They're on the same page. I was the first one. You can go back and watch this show. And I was the first critic, you know, right there with everyone else saying, Hey, these guys, they're not on the same page. Um, They're not, they're not operating as, as a cohesive unit. They are, you know, two really good wrestlers that happen to have titles. And what I saw tonight uh, in the match itself, what I saw was Kratos uh, taking control and making sure that they advanced in the tournament. And then what I saw after the match was Kratos transitioning into this role of leader of their team and trying to pull Aaron Stevens back in. Cause it's been, you know, tumultuous time for them since they won the title. You know, you had the passing of of Josephus uh, Hudson and you had all this stuff happening and Aaron Stevens has been through a lot and emotional ups and downs. And I think losing the title was a wake up call for them. Um, I'm glad to see and a little bit surprised, if I'm honest, to see Kratos saying, hey, I got your back. You're my brother. I'm not going anywhere. Um, it wouldn't be out of character for him to just be like, deuces i'm out of here uh we had a good run i'm gonna go do my own thing um but i I think now they really are coming together and i think now they are uh, at least trying to find that common ground and find that um unified front that they're gonna need if they're going to not only get through this tag team tournament but to reclaim tag team gold in the nwa it's gonna take that and so uh yeah i mean the match itself not not a lot of of teamwork going on, but in the conversation that I saw afterwards at the podium, uh, I think they're on their way. And so a little bit of my faith was restored in the former tag champs um, through this tonight. Doc, what about you? How are you feeling about all this? <clears throat> um, I think the NWA tag team division is on fire right now. Uh, the rude dudes, you know, they didn't come out on top tonight, but they I, they showed a lot of promise, a lot of potential. I like these guys a lot. I like the attitude. I like the swagger. I think they, uh, they've they only been together for, you know, a little bit of time, but there's obviously some chemistry there. So we've not heard the last of these guys. They remind me of uh, – they remind me a little bit, and, I, and I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to start any unnecessary controversy. Oh, heck, I'm going to say it. They remind me of beautiful Bobby – and Sweet Stan. I mean, they remind me, they've got a little uh, a kind of a Midnight Express, a, 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 a Sweet Stan, Beautiful Bobby kind of vibe to them, especially Sweet Stan, you know, with his antics and his, uh, you know, uh, the way he would peacock around uh, the ring and that kind of thing. Uh, whether they have, uh, a, a attain that level of greatness remains to be seen. We're a far cry from that. But I really like that tag team a lot, and I think they 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 just add to the flavor and to the depth of, of what's already becoming with La Rebellion and uh, and uh, Big Strong Pals and the End and all these other tag teams. One of the most vibrant tag team divisions of wrestling, so I'm really excited about them. Now, uh, getting to Kratos. So we've never seen this before yet. This is again we've got a lot of firsts here. Uh, up to this point, Kratos has been a mercenary. We've never seen Kratos come out and express himself uh, or express personal sentiment. Uh, and and now we know, though, that Kratos is not just a mercenary. He's not just in it for the money, that he has developed some sort of a, a relationship, a bond, a loyalty to Aaron Stevens. 
And uh, you saw him. You saw him single-handedly win this match tonight. If 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 Kratos is in this, if he's invested in this partnership, that makes this team of, and I'm talking about the team of Stevens and Kratos, a very dangerous tag team. Maybe more so than before because now they have nothing to lose, right? They've got everything to gain, and uh, and so this is really unique. Uh, you know, uh, Aaron Stevens. I see a lot of people comments in the chat. Probably any, uh, you know, Eric Dale probably knows more than anybody the amount of weight that uh, Aaron Stevens carries, uh, carrying the the, you know, the loss of uh, Joseph Hudson in his heart. You know, being his his student and, and tag team partner and, and carrying on that mantle of, of Joseph Hudson. And I don't mean to be trite here. I certainly don't mean to uh, trivialize anything, but up to this point, not, you know, I guess the pun is kind of, kind of uh, is kind of intended here up to this point. Kratos has been a question mark, right? We haven't known where Kratos has stood. Is he in it just for the money? Is he in it just as a paid assassin? And now we know that that's not the case. He's not, he's not, you know, uh, it, it, without investment, without personal heartfelt investment. And he looked at Aaron Stevens and said, I'm standing by your side. I'm not going to leave you. We're in this. I'm in this project. Now, Now I'm telling you, here's what I've got to offer. I've got to offer myself, my loyalty. Now, here's what I need from you. I see something inside you. I see a killer inside you. I see something that you've carried before that's been lost here for the last few months. And and, and and I would, you know, dare to say that that the the words that Kratos expressed tonight, I feel those words, you know, I feel Josephus Hudson echoing through that. I feel, I feel, question mark would say that to him. You know, let's let's. I need you to come back out. I need you to come back out, and I need you to be the fighter, the warrior, the champion that you, that we all know that you can be. I need that from you. I thought it was a really remarkable, remarkable, maybe even more so than the Trevor and Nick Aldis exchange earlier. I thought this was one of the most remarkable exchanges of this whole episode. I can't wait to see where this goes. Well, um, right now it's going to take them further into the tag team tournament. That's for sure. And uh, we actually have a uh, graphic for that just to show you where we're at as far as that goes. You can see here what the tag team tournament's looking like. This is for the number one contendership to the tag team titles, obviously held by La Rebellion, Mecha Wolf, and BCSA. Se, se, se. Um, you, uh, if you haven't seen, you know, those guys have been down in Mexico this past week uh, wrestling and just taking those titles everywhere. So cool to see the NWA represented down in Mexico. Uh, with those tag team titles, just a part of uh, a lot of stuff with the the uh, crash, which is a triple H uh, or triple A uh, offshoot. So uh, very very cool. Um, as you can see here, uh, last week the end defeated Jordan Clear One or Clearwater Clear One, uh, Jordan Clearwater and Sion. Uh, we're going to talk more about them in just a few minutes, but uh, the end advancing on into the quarterfinals. Slice Boogie and Marche Rocket went down to the big strong pals, Mibs and Sal Renaro. So the end is going to be meeting the big strong pals. And uh, that is, that is, I actually, that is incorrect. Oh, I'll explain in just a minute. I'm reading this wrong. Uh, the end is going to be facing the winner of Stevens and Kratos and the Rude Dudes, which was Stevens and Kratos. So it's very confusing. I'm sorry. So Stevens and Kratos versus the end. That is one of your quarter or your semifinal matches here. And then the Big Strong Pals, I promise I've only started one beer. And uh, the Big Strong Pals are uh, going to be taking on, uh, coming up, you're going to have Colby Carino and JTG taking on the father-son duo of Hawks, Airy. And the winner of that match will go up against Mims and Sal Renaro in the semifinals. And of course, the finals uh, coming up after that to see who's going to be going on, uh, presumably to the next pay-per-view to take on La Rebellion for those tag team titles. So very cool to see some, uh, some advancement in the, uh, you know, Rob talked about the tag team division in the NWA. It's picked up a lot. And, and just look, looking at those, as a matter of fact, just, you know, we're talking about throwing together teams. I mean, these are some legit teams. I mean, I know Clearwater and Scion weren't regularly paired, but they looked good together. I, 
that doesn't seem long for this world based on tonight. We'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, Slice and Marche made an excellent team. Big, strong pals have just gelled together very, very well. But, I mean, between Stevens and Kratos at this point, you've got to call them a legit tag team, I would say. And the Rude Dudes, the Id, uh, Hawks Airy, La Rebellion, Colby and JTG. That is an odd couple pairing, I have to admit. But uh, we'll see how that plays out. And, uh, again, based on some stuff we'll talk about here in a few, uh, it's, it's questionable. So, uh, moving on. The uh, next part of power that we got to was uh, Cowboy James Storm is out at the podium with Jadias and the Reverend James Mitchell, the sinister minister. Uh, and the Cowboy just straight to the point, as always, saying it's like the Wild West out here. Everybody just making their own matches and doing whatever they want. And that suits me. I'm the Cowboy. So you want a match? Let's have a match. A cage match, bar bar match, fans bring their own weapons kind of match, whatever. You punch me, I'll punch you harder, that kind of thing. All I'm asking for is you put that national title shot up on the line. I got to give it to the Rev here. He came back pretty hard. He said, you stupid redneck. Absolutely not. You're not talking to your white trash fans. You're talking to the Reverend. You're a pimple on the ass of progress. Uh, he says the only thing that he has going for him is it seems like until we eliminate you, you're holding us up from advancing into everything else we want to do. You're a masochist, and that's fine. You want to get pummeled? We'll oblige you. Uh, you you want a match? We'll have a match, but the national title is not up for grabs. And uh, James Storr says... He'd be happier if Jadias got his hand out of uh, the Sinister Minister's butthole like a puppet. And, uh, you know, a lot of things in this world have changed, but one thing that has never changed is James Storm. He's still James Mother and Storm. And if you want to fight, you got one. And uh, that's kind of how this segment ended. Just two, two big bad boys ready to brawl. And uh, no backing down from either end here. Even from the the minister, uh, Rob, what what how how'd you feel about this part? Uh, I mean, I've I've got to uh, look, man. We've got a a young guy, uh, Judas, looking for a break in the NWA. Obviously, guided by a by a a, a genius of a talent, and you've got Jane Storm, who on the heels of two really remarkable moments. And this episode of Power wants to bring us down a couple levels, wants to bring us down into the gutter with his language and with his, uh, you know, James, uh, you know, I, I got to say, everything that Senator Minister said was correct. Everything he said was correct. Judas earned that national championship. And who is James Storm to think that he can come in there and try to swindle them out of this well earned championship shot? Uh, so, my money's on. Uh, I'm throwing my. I'm casting my lots with Judas and the Sinister Minister, two upstanding guys. You know, business uh, approach um, focused on on accomplishments, focused on gains, focused on titles. That's exactly what the NWA is about. James Storm's trying to bring them down and distract them. Stay the course, Judas. Stay the course. Well, two upstanding individuals, and Jadias and uh, the Sinister Minister. Uh, it's a sentence I never thought I'd hear, but I'm curious if you are lined up with that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm lined up with that particular sentence. I will say, uh, first off, if you are a fan of Wars of Words, you need to make sure that you're subscribed on Fight TV and you watch this exchange because it was uh, – everything you dream of as a pro wrestling fan, which is uh, seems to be a theme of this episode, just these kind of moments, but uh, both in and out of the ring, this was an out of the ring moment. And it just, you, you've got two guys in the, in the heat of passion. They are going after ultimately the 10 pounds of gold, because we talked about this before and James storm has even mentioned this before on power, but that national title is a step towards sweet Charlotte. And that's the reason they both want it. And so they're sitting here, uh, you know, you're right. Judas has won that fair and square in the, in the battle Royal, despite what we may think about battle Royals, personally, not my favorite way to decide things, but it, it's what happened. And he came in and he made an impact on NWA 73 and he won that battle Royal. 
Um, so yes, he has that shot. He's run into a bit of a roadblock with James Storm. Um, and so now I just want to see these two guys fight. And honestly, I'm fine if nothing's on the line. If that if the national title shot isn't on the line, that's fine. At this point, it's just obvious that these two guys don't like each other. You throw the sinister minister into the mix. He's got some choice words for the cowboy. And um, yeah, we've we've got some some you know stick of dynamite ready to go off at this point. So I'm ready to see this match. Um, I don't care if the title shot's on the line or not. But um, yeah, a, a lot of a lot of heated exchanges going on here. Yeah, uh, agreed. And uh, you know, listen, I I love the World War War of Words, and I couldn't have said it better, Will. I mean, if you like that kind of thing, you like good promos, solid commentary, th those kind of things. Uh, just stand up like engagement between two two bad dudes wanting to talk crap to each other. I mean, the NWA is where it's at. And then you want to see two guys slug it out in the ring. Uh, you get that too. So uh, NWA is still my favorite wrestling and for a good reason. And it's, it's, it's especially moments like this where I enjoyed seeing these two guys engage. Um, next up, Melina joins Velvet uh, Sky and uh, Joe Galley at commentary uh, because uh, we're coming up to our women's match for the evening. Uh, Paola Blaze is taking on Marty Bell. Now, for those not in the know, the reason these two are facing off is because Paola Blaze and Genocide, uh, accompanied usually by Taryn Terrell, uh, they won a tag team title shot. And so Marty Bell made the threat that you can't beat us together and you couldn't beat us separately. So uh, the NWA has decided that they'll give that opportunity out to Paola and Genocide. If either one of them could beat one or the others separately, then they'll get a tag team title match. So Paola draws Marty Bell in this situation. These two have started to heat up their rivalry with each other, like getting pretty fiery in Spanish and English. And uh, here they are in the ring. And... Uh, so I guess I'll mention it right up top, and we're going to get to this, obviously. Uh, Melina's been friends. Uh, you know, I love that they tackled this because we were all kind of thrilled uh, by the other day when uh, Melina showed up with Chris Adonis to the podium. And we were like, what's going on there? Well, you know, she says they've been friends for like 20 plus years. So why wouldn't they? They hang out. Obviously, that's true. They've been in the same companies together. They've worked in the industry for a long time. Um, and uh, so... Velvet brings up the idea like, well, what, what, you know, you know, if you're friends with Strictly Business, then maybe you could end up teaming with Camille and uh, Melina makes a comment that she's not that interested in that idea too much. Uh, she's not, she doesn't seem to like Camille too much, the attitude. And uh, uh, they, I believe the, the quote they said was uh, she's seeming entitled with that title. And, uh, you know, she talks a lot of stuff now. She went from being silent to talking a whole lot, and she's not understanding there's consequences for how much you talk. And uh, anyway, they get to the match. Marty and Paola. Uh, this is as vicious as I've ever seen Marty. She's all over Paola. Uh, Genocide tries to get involved, but that leads to AK, Allison K, getting in there too. And uh, Paola tries her best, but Marty hits uh, a version of the pedigree she calls the Hell's Bells. It gets the one, two, three. So, unfortunately for Paola, no tag team title match yet, at least this week. AK will have genocide to contend with. That might be a different story. We'll find out when that comes up. But for now, Marty Bell wins. And right after that, out of nowhere, and, and honest to God, out of nowhere, Camille, with the attack on uh, poor Melina, Who's sitting at commentary? Apparently, uh, she's willing to back up what she says. Uh, Melina, or Melina gets pummeled, pummeled, beaten down by Camille, and uh, poor Velvet in the crossfire getting hit herself. She doesn't even know what to do. It is a severe beating on Melina there in the commentary position, and Camille uh, making her point, I guess, without having to say anything this time around, and walks away. Uh, Doc, I'll throw to you first. Uh, how, how are you feeling about this whole situation? You can talk about Marty Paola and also uh, the situation with Melina and Camille. Well, I said last week that I thought that Marty Bell and, and Allison Kerr are going to go be, uh, are going to proceed to be one of the great women's tag team champions in history. Uh, you know, decades down the road, they'll talk about this reign and and that this was a a, a blip in the radar. You can't just wake up one day and decide, oh, I want to be a contender, and then you get to be a contender. And Marty Bell put that to rest. Now let's go to uh, uh, let's go to uh, 
Alina and Camille. It's simply not the case, Gary. I, I'm, I'm that this was like unprovoked. I mean, were we not all there in the audience the day of the coronation when Camille, as the brand new champion, had her moment? And who interrupted that moment, Gary? That's true. It's Melina. Yeah. Say the name. Say the name. It was Melina. Who interrupted the moment. Melina interrupted the moment. This would never have been an issue if Melina had not provoked this. She stoked the fire here. She provoked this. And she had the audacity to sit there in a public place in the plain light of day for the whole world to see and hear that, oh, I don't like Camille. Well, guess what? If you say that, having done what you've done, you stoked the fire already. You provoked the, 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 the beast, and now she came after you. She had it coming. Camille did nothing wrong. This was deserved, and it was a, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, I could have I could have seen this coming a mile away. I'm surprised it didn't happen last week. Okay. Well, Will, you feeling the same way? I think I think I have a little bit of a different opinion in terms of how to resolve those kinds of things. Um, I mean, Melina has her opinions and whether or not it's smart to go air those grievances in front of, of everybody from the commentary table, knowing that Camille's probably going to hear it. Um, you know, I don't know that that's the best decision, but I also don't think, uh, you know, Camille just coming out and handling things right then and there with, you know, Velvet getting caught in the crossfire and, and, and poor Joe Galley, at least he got out of that un unscathed which I'm sure Rob is enthusiastically happy about. Um, but, you know, I, obviously it's not settled. I mean, there's th this has been brewing for a while. I mean, you called back, Gary, to uh, or Rob to um, uh, last season of Power where uh, Camille was celebrating her championship win and, and Melina interrupted. So there's obviously, you know, there's there's – there's not mutual respect here. We know that. I mean, Melina's a legend and she proved that at Empower, uh, but it doesn't seem like Camille's very impressed by that. Uh, and it doesn't seem like Melina's very impressed uh, of the fact that Camille um, won, defended her title successfully in back-to-back -back nights at Empower and NWA 73. So uh, not a lot of respect here. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard Melina come out and say, unless I missed it on commentary, come out and say that she wants a shot at the title. Um, but you got to imagine that's, that's where this is headed. Right. I mean, that's, that's the logical conclusion. These two got to have a match unless it's a non-title match, which I don't think it would be. Um, that's, that's where this road is going. I think yeah, there's good go money to, to be had in a Molina and Camille match. I like this. That's what I'm saying. You don't go to Empower and challenge for the M the Knockouts Championship and decide, oh, I don't really want the NWA uh, Burke. I don't want the Women's Championship. I, I guess my point is that Melina made the point in the beginning of this relationship. Melina made the point to air her grievances out publicly in, in, a, in an exchange that Camille did not solicit or did not invite. She did not provoke her. Uh, and then and then we saw through the whole Conspiracy Corgan series, Melina's half-hearted attempt to support um, the Strictly Business team. You know, in, in this case, it was her association with Nick Aldis. She, her heart was not in it. Uh, she proceeded to go to the broadcast table tonight to say, you know, to, to uh, meander or, or uh, hypothesize about maybe an, an arrangement between her and Strictly Business, but then say that she doesn't like Camille and to speak ill about her, man, I'm going to tell you, if you want to go out there and you want to air things out publicly, you can't take objection to when Camille choose to air, chooses to air things publicly as well. All she did was trade a spade for a spade, and Melina had it coming. She had it coming. Good for you, Brickhouse. Good for you. Good for you, champ. Doc, I know you're expecting me to disagree with you a lot here, and I, I'm just not. Uh, I think that if you're on the end of the end, if you're in the studio for NWA power or in the chase ballroom when it's time for NWA power. If you're going to say somebody's name, you better be ready to say it to their face. I believe that that's true. And that's the NWA I want to exist. And so Melina should know that and she should be ready. If she's going to call out Camille, Camille is not one of the people that has been known for 
stepping aside or hiding in the back. Camille is very available if you would like to face her. And so uh, I, I do have to say that. Now, that said, Melina is a legend, and I think she's perfectly capable, if anybody's able, of taking down Camille. Melina is possibly that woman. And so this is going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. You guys, I wanted to take a quick second, if I could, just to mention again, if you if you missed it earlier, Trevor Murdoch's first shirt is available at Collar and Elbow right there. Look at that. Collar, Elbow. You, you got to love them. Collarandelbow.com, I believe, is the website. Yes, collarandelbowbrand.com is where you can go get that. Trevor Murdoch's very first shirt. You got to get that thing. Also, I saw Certified Hustler talking about paying your five bucks for NWA Power. Props to Certified Hustler for pushing that. Yeah, on Fight TV, where you can watch NWA Power. And uh, he, he, he knows. He's a man who is a certified hustler. He knows what it's like to try to build your brand, to try to make your money, get your bag, however you can get it. So support all of your people that are out there trying to get their bag. Like the former champ, Nick Aldis, is out there with LegacySups.com. And uh, you got to check out his website. You can use the code hashtag or not hashtag, I always say this, hashtag NWAFAM, but it's just code, promo code NWAFAM, and you get 10% off of everything in the LegacySups.com shop. So you got to do that. As a member of the NWA fam, you get a discount courtesy of the champ or a former champ, whatever. I don't know what you call him anymore. I guess you call him the champ still. I still feel like calling him the champ, but anyway, Nick Aldis, he's a good guy. Hey, and, correct, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gary. We got, we got one of our brethren – one of our brethren, an NWA fam OG, who's got a birthday coming up this week. Do we? Do we, Rob? Ooh. Thursday. Thursday. I want to say. I want to say somewhere out there in the in the hinterlands out there is is wrestling with the MMA who turns twenty eight years old, twenty eight years young this Thursday. Oh, congratulations! NWA fam OG wrestling with right you. Oh, happy yeah. birthday. 28th birthday wrestling with the MMA. Uh, props to you, sir. <laughs> it's all it's all downhill from here. <laughs> uh, also, uh, the champ, Trevor Murdoch, he just celebrated a birthday uh, also. So if you didn't wish him happy birthday, make sure you take a second and uh, go back and uh, tell him happy birthday. His was, uh, what, the 10th? The 10th, I believe? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah it was. And so... Uh, all right. Uh, so anyway, and also just uh, keep those guys in mind. Trevor Murdoch with his new shirt over at Collar and Elbow, LegacySubs.com. Also, you can see our Twitter and every our at on everything. We're from a show called This Is Pro Wrestling. Uh, we'd love it if you went to YouTube.com slash This Is Pro Wrestling and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have our own YouTube there. We also have a podcast. We have our socials at TIPW Show. It would be awesome if you hit that stuff up. We got some big plans coming up for our old stuff to supplement all of this NWA stuff we're uh, grateful to be a part of. All right, let's move on. Nate Valentine is out with the Pope, Colby Carino, and JTG. Now, she expected the Pope, apparently, but did not expect Colby and JTG. She's not sure what they're doing there. Or she's just uh, enamored with the Pope being there. It's hard to tell. Uh, and uh, Pope, Pope, can, Pope can tell she's happy as well. And uh, just uh, good to see the interaction between May Valentine and the Pope. Uh, Pope just basically addressing some rumors. People know he knows what people want to know. And that's when he is going to use that title shot he has earned in the champion series. And uh, but he's got a lot of other concerns. One of them, I think we should really get trending because I think it would be fantastic, is he wants to know when Jake Paul is going to accept his invite to a boxing match. And people out there, I think that would be fantastic if we really push for the Pope to get a boxing match with Jake Paul. I think that you want to help take Paul. the NWA to the next, the next level. Pope, Pope v. Paul. That's <laughs> that's, that's what you do. Saint Pope, uh, Saint Pope versus Saint Paul, man. I mean, it just yeah. got a good ring to it. <laughs> I love it. I, I want to see that match happen. If you guys don't know, Pope's former Golden Gloves champion. He's no slouch in the ring, so. I, I only think he's halfway joking about that one. He would take that match in a heartbeat. So, uh, well, we know there's a relationship between Triller and Fight TV. So somebody's got to be able to throw this thing together. Get Pope in the ring with Jake Paul in a uh, in a boxing match. I would I would love to see that. And I, I guarantee you Pope ain't going to duck it. But anyway, uh, he says, 
that Murdoch also has a lot of concerns. And the only concern he has to have with the Pope is that he's the Pope and he knows he's coming. And uh, I love that line. And uh, Pope's made it clear it's not going to be some skeezy way of doing things. It's not going to be a behind-your-back attack or any of that stuff. He'll see him coming when it's time, and the Pope will let him know what, beforehand. And uh, But he could just sit with that for a little bit, knowing that the Pope's right around the corner. And you know the Pope's rep and what the Pope can do. So uh, that's going to be an exciting match when that finally happens. Um, we uh, we get into what you want to stop there, Doc. You look like you got something to say, so I can throw it to you there. No, I, I'm just like there it is, man. When I, I I love to hear the Pope talk. You guys know I've always been a huge advocate of this man and his potential and his talent, and I just feel it, man. I think this right here, what you're seeing, is a future NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. I think the stars are aligned. I think on day 173. <laughs> or thereabouts, <laughs> uh, you're going to look at Pope and you're going to be calling him the next holder of the 10 pounds of gold. Uh, and and I love I love his comments. You know, he's like, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not the one that has a conundrum. It's Trevor Murdoch that has the conundrum because he knows I'm not coming right now, but at the end of the day, I'm the Pope and you know I'm coming. The world knows he's coming. And yes, indeed, the Pope is coming and the Pope is coming for your championship, Trevor. Uh, Eric Dale, I see you in the chat asking about that golden gloves. I am 99% sure that's accurate. I know I looked up the Pope one time and it was this, and I swear I, this is a hundred percent accurate. He was 103 and one in his amateur career as a boxer, uh, doing amateur boxing. And, uh, he had 102 knockouts in those matches. The only loss he suffered was, was by DQ because he knocked out his opponent and didn't back up to his corner. Like he apparently had an issue mm. with that fella, but wanted to make sure he was down. And uh, and that is the loss that the Pope suffered. So the Pope ain't nothing to play with. Just throwing that out there. Jake Paul. Talking to you, Jake Paul. Call the Pope. Anyway, uh, so then JT or Colby actually tries to get over to the podium, gets a little shoving match with uh, May. May getting fiery there, uh, pushing Colby right back. You don't, uh, you don't, you don't jostle around May Valentine. She don't play. Uh, and uh, JTG tries to get some words in, but Colby takes right over there. He's got Colby. We like Colby, but he's got a little bit of an attitude. And uh, he says he's a little offended that Hawks uh, say that the Carino family have no respect. He has respect. He's dressed to the nines right now, dressed up because he's there to mourn the death of Luke Hawks' career. He'd do that for PJ, but PJ doesn't really have anything to lose. And uh, that is uh, basically Colby's uh, stance on the whole situation. JTG and Colby, like we mentioned before, will be taking on Hawks Airy in the tag team tournament. Uh, Chelsea Green comes out in the uh, hot mess, and uh, she's got her trophy. She's still carrying around. She looks fantastic for a person that looks like they're having a bad day. And uh, they asked if she still wants a shot at the Burke. I still get a, a tickle every time somebody mentions the Burke, just knowing that that started right here. But anyway, uh Chelsea says, of course I want the Burke. I won the Burke. I've won everything. She's got the trophy. She just, she, she won. So anyway, then she freaks out and goes into the camera. It was a, uh, it's a lot, a lot with Chelsea. Um, it was, well, hold on. Actually, I've Chelsea, got... you had an amazing match against Camille yesterday, but you did, That's right. you did not come out victorious though. Would you still like a shot at the Burke? What? What did you just say? <laughs> I didn't win. Oh, trust me. Trust me. The next time that Camille sees me. I'm a killer! I'm a killer! Okay. So uh, I felt I felt like there was no way to do that justice. You just had to see Chelsea. Uh, 
not, not a lot you could say to really describe how Chelsea Green is. My, my favorite part is seeing Colby and JTG like scoot at, like they just kind of <laughs> ran off camera. They're like, oh, we're okay, we're out of here. Okay, bye. You know, they were not having any part of that. So, yeah, very, very, very strange. Uh, Kira uh, is up next in the podium, and uh, Kira Hogan says she felt. <laughs> Uh, she she doesn't want any part of that hot mess. She doesn't want any. She doesn't care about anything else. She just wants to say she felt disrespected by Mickey James, uh, especially since everybody knows what Mickey James has meant to her. Kira, obviously, if you know her story, uh, grew. Uh, she she grew up watching Mickey James and met her at like sixteen, and uh, just it was uh, Mickey James was a huge part of her development as a professional wrestler, and so uh, she's upset that Mickey James seem to have stuff to say about her or didn't put her over uh, praise her as much, I guess, as she felt like she should have uh, during her last match. And uh, so she feels like they need to have a conversation. And so hopefully they'll get that opportunity. Will, do you have anything you wanted to add to this part? No, I will say like, uh, I don't know if we mentioned this yet, but I, I really do love these podium um, segments where you get to hear from multiple people at a time. I mean, it, you know, it, it can get a little out of hand like this, but um, it, it just, you know, it reminds me of, of, of wrestling growing up and, you know, you get everybody gets to come out and say their piece and, you know, wrestling does happen in the ring, but a lot of it happens outside of the ring. And so getting to see um, these segments where uh, these guys and girls get to come out and say what's on their mind, I think is really, really beneficial. Uh, this season of power has been really cool to see. Uh, but yeah, this was, I mean, from, from JTG and Colby, which I, as, as a tag team guy, and we've talked about tag teams, stuff earlier uh really interested to see how these two guys pair up together it's an interesting i don't i don't really have like a negative or positive outlook on how i think they'll do it'll just be interesting is the best word i can use to describe it um chelsea green is is uh, obviously got some things to work through and i uh, hope she uh, works through them but she does have that trophy she did win the the inaugural uh Empower Invitational, NWA Women's Invitational. So uh, she's right about that. She did win. And so uh, what she does with that is is up to her. And then, you know, Kiara and Mickey, that's that's such a, a, a cool, heartwarming story. But, um, yeah, there's a little wrinkle in it right now. So we'll see. Um, yeah. Um, go ahead, Rob. No, go ahead, Gary. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Rob. I was just going to say, there's a lot to unpack here. I need about 10. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Kira, I think there, you know, there, there was a lot of pressure uh, on everybody there at the chase uh, and uh, uh, coming off of Empower. And I think that Kira Hogan feels that pressure. I think she didn't hear maybe, maybe the words that Mickey James said regarding her didn't resonate or didn't land well. I'll listen to what Mickey James said. I didn't hear anything cross or anything other than complimentary from her. So I don't know what's bothering her but obviously i think she's feeling a bit of the pressure of being in the big leagues here in the nwa in the hottest women's division of wrestling so that point a point two i agree with uh with uh will i'm looking forward to seeing what jtg and uh kobe crino do um repository is that what you said i don't have a repository for you said suppository like suppository I, I don't think i said that <laughs> You said something about that. You, I have to go back and watch the tape. Roll, roll, hey, front row, run roll the tape that back. Hey. Hear what he said. Yeah, roll that back. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, um, and then we got uh, Chelsea Green. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I'm digging her, man. She reminds me 100 percent of my amazing, beautiful wife Tanya. Because Tanya is a hot mess, and she does the same doggone thing, boy. She had the makeup down here, like coming at me, like. <laughs> Why do you do this? Why is Petra in the uh in the in the nail polish? And I'm like, well, because you left the nail. Didn't you leave the nail? That's not my nail polish. That's your nail polish. You know, it's like she is. Uh, your your nail your nail polish is in the other. Your nail polish is in the, the other, other drawer. Shelf. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I uh man, I, I don't know. I, I I'm really mystified by Chelsea Green, who thinks 
Chelsea Green thinks that that trophy she carries around is the Burk. She thinks she's the world's champion. She thinks she's won everything. Um, she's sort of lost her bearing, but I dig it. I think that makes her vicious and it makes her mean and it makes her a killer. And I'm interested in seeing where this goes. I like her. I like Chelsea Green. That's good to hear. And uh, I shout out to Tanya. I hope you uh, are watching. And so you guys can handle this at home. Um, oh, she's prayers. up there. She's Thoughts watching. She's up there cutting up. She's up there cutting up my clothes right now. <laughs> my clothes right now. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that. Like Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea. <laughs> Eric Dale in the chat is uh, settled in on I'm I'm turning heel because I said the I felt good about the Burke. But listen, you know, front row pointed out the Burke originated on this show. That was my point. I'm not taking full credit for the Burke. I'm just saying that it, it all happened here, and so we. I feel like we all take uh, pride in that uh, achieving. And, and not just us, by the way. I say it happened here. It happened on the show and from the hashtag NWA fam discussing it on the show and celebrating it and spreading it around. So I'm not taking full credit for that. No. Um, all right. So we're going to move on. To oh, are we? <laughs> well, uh, well, Gary's gone. And Rob's muted, and uh, this this just took we a do turn. Have, we do have a, that that hurricane coming through, man. The southeast is, man. They must have not, not, not this is what happens, the grid, man. This is what happens <laughs> when we go over time. Corporate comes in and they just start pulling us out one by one. So they've they've taken Gary out. There he is. Hello, <laughs> hey everybody, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, I'm just, thanks for being patient with us while we work our way through the show. I know it's a big bit of a packed show. Also, I'm apparently stroking out here on the uh, show right now in front of everybody. So great. Anyway, Griblins. <laughs> and you are correct. Griblins always. Uh, next up, Jeremiah Plunkett versus Scion versus Jordan Clearwater. And then a lot of other people at ringside here too. Like Danny deals is with Jeremiah Plunkett. I don't even know how this occurred, but I guess Jeremiah's uh, here to make some deals and uh, black G's obviously with the golden boy and uh, Austin idol with Scion, I guess probably or wherever the money is, honestly is where Austin idol is. That's just the way it is. Um, anyway, Scion and Clearwater have been buddy, buddy lately. Uh, but uh, and, and, and I was happy in this matchup. It was a fun match. Tim Storm noticing that there seems to be a developing fandom for Jeremiah Plunkett. Uh, I think fans just have a spot in their heart for a guy like Plunky. And uh, I was thinking the same thing. And like Tim Storm said it, so I just felt bonded with Tim Storm right then. Um, anyway, uh, the weird part of this match is though, just to move into it, is that geez, with the distraction gets the ref's attention, and then Idol hits Scion in the face with something. Roll a, roll a quarters, uh, brass knucks, something. And Jordan Clearwater with the pin. One, two, three. Beats Scion, the mystery man, and becomes the number one contender for the television title, the TV title. Jordan Clearwater versus Tyrus. Jordan Clearwater seems excited about it. I feel like I, I want to go back and watch this because I feel like Jordan Clearwater's like, uh, if you go back and see it, like they're talking in the rings, Jesus celebrating with him. And then Clearwater's like, yes, I'm, I'm going to be TV champion, baby. And Jesus is like, that ain't going to happen. But they're still. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but uh, anyway, Tyrus uh, out at ringside looking on and uh, shaking his head, just like, don't get too excited, kid. And uh, this is a, since Tyrus's second TV title defense appears to be. Uh, that's going to be against Jordan Clearwater, which is a bit fishy uh, since uh, his first one was against Black G's. And so they all hang out as a uh, as Austin Idol's crew. But uh, anyway, just uh, curious. I see you shaking your head, Rob. No, 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 no. no. What, 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 are you trying to, what are you trying to suggest? You're trying to just, sit, just suggest that Austin clearly Idol saw like Austin Idol Connors. help Jordan Clearwater win. Okay, uh, this you number can't one have an spot. association of competitors. You're trying to tell me that Black G's is not one of the most deserving contenders for this championship, one of the most prestigious and uh, well-qualified wrestlers in the world, 
or that Jordan Clearwater isn't, and that Austin Idol only has ulterior motives? Is that what you're trying to say? I want you I'm to say it. it. If you're yes. saying it, then say it. I met Austin <laughs> Idol in an airport, and I feel like everything you just said accurately describes him. <laughs> yeah. You won't say that to him. You won't say that to him. Because well, he won't listen to us. He, he just it. walked away. I was gonna say, he wouldn't really talk right to now. us. So, Let me so tell technically you right you're right. <laughs> Austin Idol is the man behind, the brain trust behind Nick Aldis's first World Heavyweight Championship run. Okay? Austin Idol is the man that engineered Tyrus's NWA World Television Heavyweight Championship accomplishment. He is mentoring Jordan Clearwater, who we've all agreed is one of the top prospects in the world, and Black Jesus is one of the great unspoken talents. And you can't tell me that he didn't go in there and nearly, nearly shock the world against Tyrus. So I take umbrage with everything you said, and I want to see you say that to Austin Idol, who is one of the great geniuses of all time in this business, one of the great teachers, one of the great coaches, one of the great mentors, and my friend, Austin Idol. I want to see you say it to his face. I'd love to see you say anything to his face. Like if he would give you the time of day, cause you're calling him his friend and I don't feel like he wants anything to do with <laughs> yeah, you not, or not, us. Not. You don't know. You don't know. Don't try to put date. Don't try to come between me and us and idol. Don't try anyway, to come you, between me and us and idol. Universal wrestling college.com. If you want to talk to Austin idol, there's a good way to do it. And that's by paying him money and going to his school. So there you to, go. Uh, Universal nay, wrestling college. Going to the <laughs> Ivy league to the Ivy league of professional wrestling. The Ivy League of professional wrestling. Well, I will say this. Considering Austin Idol is there right now with three, formerly four, top prospects that are in the National Wrestling Alliance, you could do worse than going to UniversalWrestlingCollege.com. Austin Idol has your path to uh, worldwide fandom, fame, fandom, fame, whatever. Anyway, uh, so I'll I'll give Austin Idol that. Let's move on to this last thing here, though. (laughs) <laughs> Trevor Murdoch comes out. He is the judge, the special judge. Crimson has said he's going to humiliate Jack's Dane, and it turns out that the way he's going to humiliate him is he wants to have a slap fight, which sounds, you know, if you're not up for late night TV or you haven't been paying attention to the interwebs in the last 10 years, a slap fight may not sound like a big deal, but if you've seen an actual slap fight or tonight's episode of NWA Power, you know they ain't no joke. And so these two men line up for a slap fight. Each person just takes a turn and smacks the other one as hard as they can across the face. About the face and head, really. And uh, Jax gets the first one. And uh, Crimson gets the second one. And Well, you know what? Actually, lucky for all of us, thanks to our friends over at Pro Wrestling Cinema, I have a nice little video of how the first two went. Oh. <laughs> Ow. Oh, we got ear. Uh, you, got, you got a lot of ear on that one. That is so rough. <laughs> oh my God. Can, can we do it one more time? I... Ugh. <laughs> I can't not react. Ah, that that chalk flying. That kills. That is brutal. (laughs) This whole whole slap fight thing feels like an idea that Rob would have after we, like, closed down the bar in St. Louis one night. We'd be like, hey, let's just slap each other. Let's slap each other, guys. (laughs) Did y'all still had a slap fight? Where'd you get the chalk? No, not me. And, not me. He's my brother. Not oh. me and him. We seen it though. <laughs> we were out there at the Magic Attic in St. Louis, downtown St. Louis, and we seen it happen, didn't we? Sir, tell him, certified. Tell him. I will so, say. So, uh, Crimson's plan. Crimson's Louis plan. Louis barbecue. Crimson's plan to humiliate uh, Jack Stain. I, I wouldn't say that that necessarily was was realized in the main event tonight but it definitely put a spotlight on how much these guys are not the workings anymore 
<laughs> how much disdain there is between these two guys. You, you don't, you know, it, it's it's one thing to have have words with somebody to to have a spat, so to speak. Uh, this has evolved well beyond that. These guys are willing to stand in the middle of the ring and just slap the crap out of each other like that. Um, this is this is bitter. This is a bitter uh, war that is going on here between these two guys. I don't know that this was any resolution to that, um, and it just erupted. I'm sure you'll you'll get into this in a second, but it just erupted into chaos um, after this. So, yeah, I want to talk about that, but first I want to show you this. Mm. My face hurts. Oh god. It's the ear for me. It's the ear. Oh, uh it was the ear for Jack Stade too, let me tell you. And, uh, you can see it on his face. I'm sure there were plenty of rounds scheduled for that slap fight, but after Crimson's hit against Jack Stade, there was a definite glaze over those eyes, and you could see it. Some people say wrestlers pull their punches, but just rewind. Tell me there's anything pulled there. Those guys wailed on each other's faces. And uh, Jack Stade, those eyes like had that brief glaze. There was a ring in his ear. You could tell he was like something's going on. There was a moment where Jack Stade decided – no more rounds of the slap fight. Now, Crimson, unfortunately, didn't know it yet, but Jack Stade lined up to go for another. And as Crimson readied himself, Jack Stade used that opportunity to go ahead and go full fist right to the face and punch Crimson, taking him down. Jack's attacks. And then Strictly Business is out. And Strictly Business starts attacking Trevor Murdoch. And then the Pope comes out and he starts helping out Trevor Murdoch. And then Judas comes out and he starts attacking Adonis because he wants the national title, I guess. And now he just feels like he needs to be out here. Then James Storm comes out because he doesn't like Judas and he starts attacking Judas. And then Crimson and Jax are out by the table and they're fighting each other. Trevor Murdoch's just hitting whoever will let him. And then they're just, just a big chaotic brawl. And I can't keep up with this. I do not envy Joe Galley, Tim Storm, and Velvet Sky. Jackson Trevor face off outside of the ring. They're staring at each other eye to eye. Jack Stane has a title shot against Trevor Murdoch. How's this going to go? We won't know right now because Crimson is in the middle of this and punching Jack Stane in the face again. And then Murdoch just says, oh, there's Chris Adonis. I'm going to attack Chris Adonis and everything goes eight crap. And the whole show ends on that. <sighs> and I'm out of breath. First of, all, about it. first of all, Gary. Settle down. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> You're getting Ooh. too excited. Uh, no, this this was, I feel like it was a culmination of not just everything we, we, we experienced on tonight's episode, but things that have been brewing under the surface for a long time. I mean, uh, that we talk, you know, again, about prize fight wrestling and about uh, wrestling with, with true emotion and true feeling behind it. And that's what you're seeing the culmination of at the conclusion of tonight's NWA power is you're seeing a locker room full of guys who uh, don't like a lot of the other guys that they're sharing a locker room with. And when you have something as tense, because these guys are used to wrestling matches, that that's what they do. It's their, it's their livelihood. But when you have something as tense as this slap fight where it's just, uh, you know, like Crimson said, I'm just going to aim to humiliate the other guy. Um, I think tensions rise and and things, you know, boil over. And that's what we saw. And, you know, it, it was interesting. It was interesting to see, you know, who was going after who. And you had, you know, Trevor Murdoch helping out the cowboy. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but but James Storm was in the corner with Judas and and Trevor Murdoch comes over and helps him get Judas, you know, cleared out of the ring. And uh, like you said, this epic stare down between Jack Stane and Trevor Murdoch and and what what are the implications there? I mean, you know, and, and it was just it was a reminder to me too, and we hinted at this earlier in the show, but Trevor Murdoch is in a really interesting position and it's not unlike NWA champions of the past. We talk about this all the time, but there's a target on your back. If you hold sweet Charlotte, you are at the top of the mountain and everybody wants 
that. And Nick Aldis mentioned it last week. He said, you've got a target on your back. Every guy in that locker room may say they're your friend, but they'll turn on you at a moment's notice. But you've got like, we don't really even know who the first challenger to Trevor Murdoch is going to be. But as I looked at all the people involved in this brawl, I'm like, well, Chris Adonis is the national champion. He rightfully could take a shot at him and he, and strictly business has been going after him. You've got, you know, Jadias and James Storm, who both want the national title to eventually get to that place, you know, to go after Trevor. You got Pope, who who just outright said it earlier, hey, I'm coming. You don't know when, and and I'm not gonna try to surprise anybody, but I'm coming for the for the 10 pounds of gold. And then you got Jack Stain, who's got a time. I mean, you just got all this stuff going on, and it's like, how must it feel to be Trevor Murdoch right now to to carry that title, but to also carry that burden of like who like you got to watch your back and your side and, your, and like all around you because everyone's coming for you. And that was kind of what was in the back of my mind as I was watching this brawl is Trevor Murdoch. He's got his work cut out for him. And so we'll see what happens. Well, doc, I mean, if you, if you look back at the very beginning of this show and to where it ended, the last words that Nick Aldis left Trevor Murdoch with was with, was this will be the hardest and most rewarding experience of your life. And uh, right. I feel like Trevor Murdoch's starting to get a taste of that right now. <laughs> that uh, yeah, the victory will be so sweet, but only because everything else in your life is about to be so very, very hard. Absolutely. I wouldn't read in, into anything that we saw in that last bit of pandemonium. I wouldn't read any alliance into that at all. James Storm and Trevor Murdoch, whatever. Here's the bottom line. The bottom line is every person that came out there came out there because they have a laser focus on that trophy that Trevor Murdoch carries. The Pope was there because he has an interest in Trevor Murdoch's belt. James Storm was there because he has an interest in Trevor Murdoch's belt. Everybody was out there. Chris Adonis was out there because he has an interest in Trevor Murdoch's belt. The only thing that we know for sure in the NWA, the only thing that we know for sure is that strictly business exists as an entity. That's the only thing we know for sure. Everything else is freaking pandemonium. And Trevor Murdoch, you wanted this? You wanted the crown? What'd you say last week, Gary? Heavy is the head who bears the crown, right? That's right. Now, you get to sleep on that. You get to sleep on this little taste of everybody in the world coming after you. Let's see if you can handle the heat in the kitchen. Well, it's one of the things that Nick Aldis, uh, so cool, calm, and collected handled. We want to know what you guys think. Uh, you let us know in the chat. Who do you think? Who's the first person that gets a crack at Trevor Murdoch? Is it? Uh, is it, I mean, Nick Aldis is obviously apparently stepping aside. Is Pope going to make his presence known? I mean, is it going to be Colby Carino just coming out of nowhere, a mystery man, or? <laughs> So Colby's, Colby's your first. Oh, it's not Nick. Maybe Colby. Like, what well, no, Nick stepped South? aside? I'm saying Colby South? Carino's one of the people that has a title shot. He oh, okay. Has yeah, one yeah, in yeah. The back. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Colby Carino has the shot. Colby Carino, Scion, and Jack Stade, along with Pope, all have from the Champion Series an, an option to cash in for that World's Heavyweight Championship if they cho so and choose. And on top to of so. that, on top of that, you've got Chris Adonis, who is the de facto number one contender, and you've got Nick Aldis, who should have it, uh, unless the bylaws have changed, and I don't think they have. I just looked at the bylaws a couple of weeks ago. He gets an entitled rematch. So not only do you have those four guys, you've got this guy, you've got that guy, then you've got James Storm, who is a shot, and then you've got Jadias, who's the number one contender to the national championship, now you got Jordan Clearwater, who's the number one contender to the World Television Championship, and you do defend that seven times, you get a crack at it. You got Tyrus. Yeah, I was about to say, everybody, we haven't even mentioned Tyrus. Oh, Tyrus is there, man. Tyrus, Tyrus. If you didn't see Tyrus, Tyrus on Robert, Fox News the other day, I mean, there's clips all over the internet for it. This is what Tyrus brings to the table. Love him or hate him. Tyrus is there on Fox News wearing that TV title every single night. And he pointed out a two two things, but what I did not know, which was that a he is Trevor Murdoch's cousin. Did you guys know that? Uh, Tyrus no. and Trevor Murdoch are cousins. Okay, and he wished uh, 
he, he sent his uh, congratulations to Trevor Murdoch for winning the World Heavyweight Championship. So on, on the show, on national television, there was a row, rowdy loud of, round of applause for Trevor Murdoch winning the World Heavyweight title. And then Tyrus also made sure to say, uh, I only got a few more defenses left, and then I'll see you there. And uh, so Tyrus very much has Trevor Murdoch on the radar. He knows what he's got. And he's proud to carry it around and flaunt it because he knows that's his ticket. Like Doc says, he's proud of that TV title because why wouldn't you be? This is the TV title that's oh so famous for being on everybody from Art Anderson to Tully Blanchard to whoever. You know, I mean, this is a big deal TV title, but it's also the ticket to the championship, the real world's heavyweight championship. And you can bet your sweet Biffy, Tyrus, wants that title. And, uh, so, yeah, uh, James Lawrence in the chat saying uh, he thinks Easter egg time. Uh, Jack Stane's coming for that belt. Uh, Roy to Cap says J- Jack Stane versus Tre- Trevor Murdoch. Uh, and uh, I don't know uh, who else it's we just, got in just there. Just remember, Trevor, no, Trevor, no, no king can tolerate a pretender to the throne. And what, right now, in the landscape of the NWA, we count – at least seven or eight legitimate claimants, seven or eight guys who have a legitimate claim to a shot, to a crack at your crown. You know, I don't remember the lands. Just remember, let, let's go back in history. Historically, you know, when you go back to the 80s, the NWA World's Television Championship wasn't necessarily considered a stepping stone to the world title. It was the title that was defended on TV, right? That's changed. That's changed in the Lightning One era. Now that title is you. You earn that title to put yourself in a position through pro, through a proving ground of seven matches to get a crack at the championship. There's not a situation. There's not a a a major championship right now whose terminus does not culminate in the ten pounds of gold or the Burke or the I, or, or the World Tag Championships. There's not a. Tra- a Every route leads to that. And if you're Trevor Murdoch, I gotta tell you, you're living in, you know, you occupy a tremendous heritage. You know, you're 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 wearing the title that means everything in the history of the sport. But never before have you had so many legitimate guns pointed at you, so many legitimate targets on your back. All these guys have a claim. And if tomorrow they want to say, hey, respect the claim, if you're a man like Nick Aldis is, you gotta respect it. So you got a I was lot of I was going to say, Doc. And, and I'm sh- glad you I'm glad you brought this up because I I, I was actually going to say is that even ever felt like this even during Aldous's reign over the past 1,044 days did it ever feel like at any point it was that like the the landscape was this this uh, deadly? I, I'm trying to think of the word. Well, it's, word it's for because it. it's because it had been so long since you saw the title change, and I think NWA 73 reminded everybody that that title can change hands, and it lit a fire under a lot of these guys saying, "Okay, you know, Nick Aldis can lose the title, so can Trevor Murdoch, and I can be the guy to do that." And I think that's exactly the dynamic that has happened. You know, being in St. Louis, being at such a historic weekend with NWA and Power and then NWA 73. Yeah, the Nature Boy Ric Flair is in the building uh, to witness history and to be part of it. And and I think that just renewed everybody's vigor to to let's do this. I mean, that all these guys, just like you mentioned, these guys are in there for one reason, and that's to be at the top of the mountain. Nobody gets into professional wrestling to, you know win uh, uh, the TV title. No shade on the TV title, but nobody goes in and says, gosh, I want to win the TV. And once I win the TV title, I can retire. No, nobody. That's an accomplishment and it's something to be respected, but it's a, it's, it's a stepping stone on the path to being at the top of the mountain. And that's what you're going to find in the NWA. And that's what we're seeing right now. But I do think it goes back to such a historic title change after 1,044 days of that title not changing hands. Now a lot of these guys are reminded, hey, I I, I could do that. I could be the next guy. And uh, so everyone's really highly motivated. It's 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 so weird to think about. But yeah, the, the uh, 
Trevor Murdoch works his whole life to get to this point. He finally wrestles away, no pun intended, but literally and figuratively wrestles, wrestles away the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, the real world title from Nick Aldis after a 1,044-day reign, and you think you get a day of rest. And this is something that, to his credit, Nick Aldis has always said and would have told you on what day 1,044 or day 1,045, there is no rest when you have the crown. And uh, Trevor Murdoch is finding that out right now because he just he wrestled it away and now has the most uh, strenuous situation in front of him here and that you, he, it's never been more apparent, I guess is really the way I would put it. It's, it's always been assumed. It's always been, uh, you can count on that people want the title, but it's never been so visually apparent right in front of your face that there are, there is an army of people waiting to take that championship away from you. It's a land grab right now. They saw a cheek in the armor of the champ. They saw somebody else take it. And now they want a piece of that. And, uh, and now there's literally like Rob keeps pointing out, like just, uh, so many, so many challengers waiting. So many people at bay just waiting for their opportunity. When can they take it? And it's even worse guys that, it's not just it's not just that there's people that could potentially challenge like front row throw it out there tom latimer like god bless him tom latimer what if he goes for the title right like if he could work his way into a title match that is a hell of a challenger but tom latimer will have to finagle something to make that happen if tomorrow tomorrow just randomly on the street uh, freaking Jax Dane decides he wants a title shot against Trevor Murdoch, it has to go down. Like, Trevor Murdoch has to be ready, has to be on guard against like four people Pope, Jax Dane, Colby Carino, Mystery Man, Sion, all of those guys at any given moment next week on Empower or not Empower, uh, Power Surge is next week. But what if? there's a live interview with Trevor Murdoch and somebody steps in or the next week on NWA power. Somebody just decides that day. Uh, I don't know. Pope just walks up and says, Oh, by the way, I told you I'd let you know it's in the main event tonight. I'm going to take you on for the world's heavyweight championship. That could happen. That is a literal possibility that Trevor Murdoch has to deal with. He does not get to rest with that title. No, there's no rest for the weary. And, and when you're when you're the world's heavyweight champion, you don't ever get a day of rest. You're up, you know, before 5 a.m. every day, and you go to bed at 2 a.m. And uh, you you you. It's not just you're not just an athlete. You're a statesman. You carry the weight of the company. So you've got the podcast. You've got you know the attention you have to give to social media. You've got uh, you know you're you're everybody wants a piece of you. Not just the athletes, by the way. I mean, how many times have the three of us talked to Trevor Murdoch in the last couple of weeks? Multiple times, you know, and and we're just a small fraction of the 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 pro wrestling world who are clamoring to get a second of time with Trevor Murdoch. So that's something that 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 now you will understand the weight of the office. Now you understand what made Nick Alda so great to be able to do this at such a high standard for 1,044 days. And uh, I don't want to keep harping on that. We've, we've got to move on. Uh, you know, Trevor Murdoch earned the right to prove himself and to do this. And and it doesn't matter whatever happens from here on out. He, he's reached a mountaintop. He's achieved the greatest, you know, accolade you can ever achieve in this sport. Now, let's see how long. Let's, let, I'd like to, I'm interested in his endurance. How long can this last? Now that the landscape, as you pointed out, Gary, the landscape has changed so dramatically, like instantaneously. It's like, we woke up on March the 20th, 2020, and suddenly the world was, you know, just grasped by this pandemic and it changed everything. The landscape in the NWA seems so different now than it did just, you know, 15, 17 days ago. It seems so different. It's true. Um, and you know what? Uh, Trevor Murdoch has no choice but to find out what his endurance is going to be like. 
because he's living it right now. And we're going to see it. We're going to see it all on NWA Power. I'm trying to think real quick of anything else I wanted to give a shout out to. Uh, Chris Adonis, uh, get well soon, sir. We know uh, Chris Adonis is supposed to travel overseas to defend the national title against Doug Williams. And uh, that would be pretty impressive to see the national travel, our uh, national title start to travel. Unfortunately, Chris Adonis has gotten COVID. And uh, so we're wishing him the best and a speedy recovery. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Rob. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, also want to give a shout out to Camille, who uh, for two weeks in a row has been in the top five on PWI's overall women's wrestling rankings. So, uh, props to Camille. You know, we talked about her a little bit tonight. You know, there's there's another woman who. A lot of people are gunning for her. We saw one of those weeks, only Becky Lynch sitting above her. And uh, and uh, I'd, I'd take Camille in that fight, too, to be honest with you. But oh, anyway. No doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> but uh, Camille is, uh, she ex- just this week experienced that same thing between Chelsea Green talking about she's going to kill her and uh, Melina talking crap. And, you know, Camille's, Camille's got a lot of, uh, a lot of, Wait to carry with that Burke too. So uh, it's uh, it's exciting time to the NWA guys. It's going to be really really cool. Now we'll probably get a little bit of a relief uh, with the power coming up. We'll get a little bit of time to build on what's going on and take a breath and see what's happening. I, I keep saying in power. I mean power surge uh, coming up next week. And uh, so with power surge, you you get some uh, you know typically more interviews and that kind of thing. But I'm sure there'll be some matchups involved. Uh, so we'll get to take a step back and uh, see what's going on in the NWA. In the meantime, we've kept you guys here long enough. And God bless every single one of you that's still here. There's still so many of you. We appreciate you for being here. Uh, we we ran long tonight. There was just so much happening, a lot to discuss as far as the state of the NWA, I guess. And uh, anyway, we look forward to hanging out with you again next week on Tuesday night. Roughly 705, 715, 720-ish, somewhere in there. And uh, you guys uh, hit us up on the Twitter, the Instagram, everywhere. Let's talk NWA. We love keeping the conversation going. And uh, give those folks in the NWA social media props. They're trying to keep the conversation going. Let's talk about what we love. Let's get let's get the NWA trending. It is a main topic of conversation on the inter- interwebs. And uh, make make it... Make it so that everybody can't help but to see what's going on over on NWA Power. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Certified. Steiner Recliner, thanks for being here. Front row. KM, Certified Hustler, always. Roided Caps, you're a blast every single time. Front row, you're all right. James Lawrence, thanks for showing up when you could. Uh, Doc, Will, you guys have anything you want to add here? Nope. Thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, check us all out. Interact with us. We love meeting new people and talking about wrestling on the internet. Join our Discord. I don't know if we mentioned that yet, but we do have a Discord. Uh, it's the pinned tweet at TIPW show. Come join us. All right. And uh, thanks for everybody uh, for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you next time here on the show. Until then, though, you guys enjoy your gravy cake. <laughs>